watching this for your declining parent, things may have already gotten a little bit worse, but there's still actions that can be taken uh, on their behalf if you act now. So, okay, this is what we're going to talk about is the elder care continuum. A lot of what Doug talked about does apply because we will use a lot of the same legal documents. We want to put a plan in place so that you get the care that you want and that you need. But I want to be able to emphasize that the second column, the limited function where you're at home with some assistance and there's a little bit of more money coming out of the wallet. This is where a lot of people are if they transition to have more limited function, if they don't have help, they really should be in a retirement community or assisted living, and that's going to cost more money. This, these two columns is what I call the danger zone. And here's why it's because the body compensates. If you have an illness, your body is going to compensate for that. So you can mm, kind of hide it for a while. Uh, my mom was really good at that. What happens is if you have one illness in your 60, 68, 69, 70, then, you know, typically you, you develop another one. You may have diabetes and then you develop um, a heart disease or high blood pressure and the body continues to compensate. My mom was real good at this. She was able to hide several different health challenges that your mom may be able to do the same thing, hide these challenges from most people that they, that she will come in contact with. Well, why is that important? Once the body feels that it has, it has dealt with too many of these health issues, it peaks and the compensatory defense sets off like a domino effect and you start to decline much more rapidly than you expected. So if this happens and you haven't done your planning, you haven't told somebody that you want to stay at home or you want to be in a specific independent living or specific assisted living, you may not have the opportunity to do that. Also changes in the body can impair decision-making capacity. Now, why is that important? If your loved one lives alone, their decision-making capacity is extremely important for their health, safety, finances, for their day-to-day -day survival. The thing is, if you're out of state, that's hard to see. If you see them on a regular basis, you know um, their living situation and you have a really good grasp on what you think is going on with their health, even if they won't tell you. If you know the questions to ask and when to ask them, you can more clearly assess the situation with your loved one to see if they are making rational decisions. If they're making good decisions, that's great. If they're healthy, safe, paying their bills on time, you couldn't ask for more than that. They can age in place safely, but what if they're making some not so good decisions. We have seen this time and time again. For example, what if their driving abilities have declined and they, they can't react to someone pulling out in front of them as fast? Maybe they shouldn't be driving. What if they get to the grocery store and they don't know how to get home? If they didn't have a GPS in their car, they couldn't get home. Not a good decision. If they're not paying their bills on time, understand we're going to have another cold winter this year. If they're not paying their bills and their electricity goes off, it's going to be a bad day. What if they're not taking their medications as they should be? That could be extremely dangerous. What Doug talked about is the people on the left-hand side of the line with the arrow going up. That is box one. This bell curve is box two. And this slope that goes down to the right is a very slippery slope and it's a very steep slope. And what I mean by that is what we just discussed. You can develop an illness such as even a mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia, plus a heart disease. And these compound and you're in a danger zone 
And if you don't do your planning at this point, you may not be able to live the life that you want in the last few years. Now, the good news is there's a downward trend in people going to the nursing home. Back in 1975, there were just over a million people that were in nursing homes and Medicaid was paying for that care. It peaked in 1995 and since then has been a downward trend. There are a lot more people staying at home now and it's because they want to stay at home and they realize that they can your care can be planned for. So let's assume that things just got worse and you're getting closer to that downward edge of the slope. This may be where it's, it's pretty clear that mom and dad need some help, but there are a lot of issues to sort through and we're gonna go through some of those. They may realize that they need help but they may not be willing to admit it or they may just not want your help. What do you do then? What if you're trying to coordinate care while you're doing everything else in your life? You've got your own family, you've got a job, you've got a business to run, you've got all of your life activities, your own health, you're stretched thin. What if you try to help them and you're, you just start to doubt yourself? You don't know, am I making the right choices here? Is is this the right thing to do? Should I bring in some non-medical care? Should I get some technology in there so I can see what's going on during the day? I did this. I doubted myself a lot, even though I had helped a lot of people through this. When it's your family, it's really hard to, to realize the right steps to take at the right time to get them the right care in the right location. And what if you're trying to do this from out of state? Can you imagine mom and dad are here in Arkansas and you're in Colorado. It's a flight home, but you can't do it every weekend probably. And what if you start doing something and the family doesn't agree on this is the right way to proceed? What if you need to take over and to make decisions for mom and dad? Do you have the authority to do that? Have they signed a power of attorney giving you the authority to make financial decisions for them? a healthcare power of attorney to make decisions in, for them medically. A lot of times we have clients that will come in and do their estate planning. They'll, they'll come back in 10 years later and want to make a change because one of the kids got married and changed the spelling of their name and their address, their phone number. Well, mom and dad had to go to the bank to get their documents out of the lockbox. They never even told the kids that the kids were appointed as power of attorney or trustee under the trust. What if mom and dad have done that and they've waited too long now and they don't have capacity to make changes? And, and what if they haven't given you the authority to uh, make financial or medical decisions for them and they don't have the capacity to do it now? Then you're facing a guardianship and that's a whole nother monster. Does mom or dad or mom and dad need help? Can you assess that situation? In our office, we have an elder care coordinator that can assess and determine if the help is going to be needed and what kind of help, where to get that help. Are mom and dad willing to accept help? We've had several clients through the years that were adamant, wouldn't let anybody come in their house, wouldn't let the kids help. Didn't end up well. It's better if you cooperate as a family and put a plan in place and let everybody participate that's willing. What if they say no, they don't want your help, but it's really obvious that they do need help. Well, outsiders may step in like the police or the sheriff or adult protective services. Have you had a family discussion about this? It's not the easiest thing to do but you can do it. There are a lot of reasons why they may say, no, thanks, I don't want your help. They may be like somebody I know, like me. <laughs> very independent, very strong-willed, bullheaded at times. I wanna take care of myself and Doug as long as I can possibly do that. I don't want help, but I know that if I don't make choices now and put a plan in place, that what will happen down the road won't be what I want. Why would they refuse help from the kids? Well, they promised each other they're going to stay at home as long as they possibly can. They're not going to go to a nursing home. 
And if they let the kids help, they're afraid that's what the kid's option is going to be. Go to a nursing home. It may be financial reasons. $8,334 a month is the average cost of a nursing home in our state right now. We have one facility in town that is $305 a day, every day. That's over $9,000 a month. Going to um, a nursing home like that can cause them to lose their money. They think they'd lose their house. They think they might lose the farm. This is what we see oh so often when we have a well spouse and a sick spouse. And I'm going to do this with my hands. They lean on each other because they love each other. And they have been leaning on each other for years now till it gets to the point where it collapses. The well spouse may not be as well as we had expected. Can you do this alone? Maybe. It's much easier if you have a quarterback to help. In our office, the quarterback that we offer is our elder care coordinator. So I hope you get one thing from this presentation. Again, you can decide or the government can decide for you. And the key is to put a plan in place to make sure you get the plan in the future that you want and you need so that you can get the care you want. Getting started, there's three easy steps. Click on the link, there'll be a follow-up email that'll go out in us and we'll listen. You know, we we'll, you click a link to talk to one of our team members just to see if we can help you. And if so, uh, they'll set a time to for an attorney meeting and we'll visit with you in person or by Zoom. This meeting will take an hour or less and we'll give you the clarity uh, that you need about your situation and answer any questions that you've got. And if we decide to proceed, we'll get started.